One of the things that attorneys like, attorneys make their money often through the modification process. We're going to rush this through real fast, and then you have one person who feels, I don't have any type of protection here. You're caught like a deer in the headlights. I've just lost all of this. You don't know what to do. So then they tell you, well, get an attorney and go back to court. And then, of course, now your ex-wife gets an attorney. The, the family law attorneys are financially raping your families. And, and they're telling you, well, this is your right to fight. But what is the first that they do when you go to see them? They look, can you give, list your assets? Oh, we, we see you have $50,000 for your children's college fund. Hmm, that's an asset that we can take. That will be in the best interest of the children. We'll tell you this stuff to make you feel good that you're fighting for your kids. And they're ruining your kids. They're ruining their, the futures. They're destroying marriages indiscriminately. And then they say, but you have the right and the freedom to do so, and we're here to help you. My ex-wife's attorney, I saw when my ex-wife, after she got her divorce, she started crying, and the attorney handed her a Kleenex. Now, the attorney was charging her $400 an hour. Charles Schurenberg, Charles Slimy Schurenberg, but he made sure to give her a Kleenex so she could dab her eyes. What a bunch of crap. I'm sorry, I got a little bit upset here. Those are some of the, the the incentives in the system. You mentioned something that I have. That it's really funny, not funny, but insightful. That it seems like attorneys don't want you to fight when it comes to the grounds for divorce, but they do want you to fight if it has to do with modifications and going back for a better financial settlement. So Absolutely. There seems to be a little contradiction there and hypocrisy. That's actually really, really interesting I mean, point because you know in my, right? in my mother's case, I, I, really, the I question was okay. Really why, why to it was very easy day, enough to year. just give a lump sum, say this is the total amount that's due. It doesn't have to be, you know, upfront at all at once. But this is the lump sum. Yeah. Rather than just giving this vague, well, you know, dad owes mom X amount until he retires, but we don't know when he's going to retire, and maybe he'll work after retirement. Maybe he won't. Like, we'll see. Like, you'll come back and probably ask for modification. Yeah. It, it just adds to the pain because you just want things to be final. Yeah. You don't want to deal with the other person uh, after a lot of this uh, yeah. trauma. So, uh, yeah, absolutely right that modifications is a way to prolong the process once the divorce has already gone through. So let me tell you what happened is, as far as the slammy attorney that I mentioned, Charles Schoenberg, he forgot to have me sign some paper for something. I had two girls, I've told you about this, and I wanted to make sure that they had a place to stay for free so that they could go to, go to college. I was willing to give up the house. I didn't think I should have, but I wanted to make sure that things worked out well for them. Well, slimy Charles Schurenberg forgot to send me a paper. So you know what happened? My ex-wife wanted me to do something, and I'm like, we're divorced. You wanted this divorce. Figure it out. She wanted me to act as if I was still married to her after she had just spent, I don't know how many thousands of dollars to divorce me, impoverish me at the same time. She had to sue me again then. And she had me serve the second time she, because her attorney screwed up. And this is what happens. These attorneys will screw up, and I think sometimes intentionally, because that's where they make their money. I mean, when they tell you, well, you're going to have to give us a $10,000 retainer Look at that retainer as being the down payment. That is not what you're going to pay. It's not the total. It's not the, hell no, it's not the total. It's a whole lot more than that. And it's always that way. But, you know, we'll, we'll get this done. You know, uh, we're going to get, the, and by the way, here's your Kleenex while we dab your eyes. No, I, I mean, some of the, the stories that I hear and some of the things that I see, I mean, it makes me want to say that a lot, the majority of attorneys are incompetent. Yeah. But to your point, it may not be necessarily incompetence, but intentional uh, mistakes yeah. just, just to prolong the process because once their job is done that, that you're you're not a source of their income. Yeah. So we have a, a lady down in Texas. Her name is Joelle Sheridan. She is the head of the Texas Family Law Foundation. What a nice foundation. I mean, they're there to research things on behalf of the family. Anybody who knows the Texas Family Law Foundation thinks that they're probably the Texas Anti-Family Law Foundation because they seem to espouse every anti-family policy possible. But Joelle Sheridan got in front of a committee in Austin and as she was introducing herself as being the, I think it was the president of the Texas Family Law Foundation, she made the comment on record that she's most proud of her position as being a lobbyist 
for the Texas Family Bar. Now, what is the purpose of a lobbyist? To lob <laughs> to push an agenda for financial reasons. I am most proud of my position to push the financial interests of these Texas family law attorneys to make sure that they're being covered. There are instances of incompetence, but there are also instances of calculated corruption, in my opinion. My opinion as well, and I think there's starting to be more and more evidence for that, so I'm, I'm glad that this information is being exposed because I think that it goes beyond an assertion that there is now yeah. clear evidence for that. Well, there's also something else that takes place, and Stephen Krasner wrote about this. I don't know if you know Stephen Krasner, but he's written a lot of things about family court. You look at judges, where the sources of their campaign funds come from when they're running for re-election. Well, lo and behold, it happens to come from the attorneys. And there seems to be a very strange, strange correlation between how much the attorneys give to a judge and how frequently they get before that judge and how frequently that judge rules in their favor. You know, of course the attorneys only give money to good judges, and a good judge is defined as a judge who rules in my favor. <laughs> I mean, this is just how bad it is.